You're watching ABC 7 News at 7. Typically during a midterm election, the party that's out of power has more energy, more enthusiasm to push back against the party uh, that's in power. And I think that's even more so the case when you have uh, Donald Trump as president. The congressional race is heating up Two Democrats campaigning for a chance at the seat held by Vern Buchanan. How do they all match up? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the 16th congressional district race in a moment for first our top seven stories at 7. Remember that line from the movie Apollo 13? This is a bad way to fly. The Sarasota County School District is now backpedaling after the superintendent said he had close to a new agreement with the Sheriff's Office to provide school resource deputies. Todd Bowden told board members today that he was close to a deal with the Sheriff's Office to once again split the cost of the school resource deputies, but the Sheriff's Office is denying it, saying Bowden and Sheriff Tom Knight haven't even spoken. It has been less than a week since the school district hired a chief to lead its new internal police force. School board member Shirley Brown hoped a new deal with the sheriff's office meant more time to hire and form the school police force. We, we put it on the back burner and but obviously we can't do that. We've got to move forward and you know we, we had you know we were going to be doing interviews this week and uh, I guess that's back on. We're going to do them again. The school district said in the statement it will continue to hire sergeants and SROs for the coming school year and beyond. And it's its understanding that local law enforcement, including the sheriff's office, will provide officers until the new police force is trained and ready for duty. Meanwhile, the Sarasota County School District is still investigating the man chosen to become chief of police for the school based police department. According to the county, Paul Krakowski is under attack by a small group of people who are dissatisfied with his previous leadership before his application to work in Sarasota County. He was the director of public safety and chief of police at a community college in California. The group targeting Grakowski believes that he made a mistake by combining two police forces there. As a response, the Sarasota County School District is continuing its background check and if his personal file and background check are clear, Chief Krakowski will be the school district's new police chief. A father and son duo from Sarasota have made it their mission to track down as many Burmese pythons as possible. Tom and Connor Peltier found this snake during their three-day invasive species tour between Sarasota and South Florida. They caught the python at one of Florida's 22 wildlife management areas where the species can be killed at any time. Police hunter, Florida hunters have removed a thousand invasive Burmese pythons since the state's elimination program started last year. Members of Congress from Florida are now heading to Texas to witness the ongoing immigration issue firsthand. Congressman Debbie Wasserman Schultz hosted a meeting today to discuss President Trump's policy and how the U.S. deals with the immigrants. Wasserman Schultz says she believes the solution will come by the way of a separate law and not just an immigration bill. She added that she will head to Texas to see herself how this immigration issue is unfolding. It'll be very evident that Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and the Republicans in Congress can say whatever they want about caring about changing this policy. If they don't pass a separate bill, it's clear that they don't care and that the, the, the impact and the consequences and the devastation that these children are going to suffer is going to be on their hands too. We'll have more on this story and the president's response in our primetime headlines. Qualifying for candidates to run for offices across the state starting today and continues until noon Friday. The most prominent candidates will qualify in the race for governor where Agricultural Commissioner Adam Putnam and Congressman Ron DeSantis are squaring off for the Republican nomination. Tallahassee Mayor Andrew Gillum, former Congresswoman Gwen Graham, businessman Jeff Green and Chris King, and former Miami Beach Mayor Philip Levine are seeking the Democratic nomination. Nomination. I know that um, people in Northern Florida, Central Florida and Southern Florida, one thing that they really want is someone that has a history of getting things done. Florida's primary election will be held Tuesday, August 28th with the general election November 6th. Now let's head over to ABC 7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. 
Well, good evening, everyone. Another hot day today. Heat indices up near 100 to 105 degrees. Uh, some areas have cooled down as a result of some rainfall that is moving through. Those showers are going to continue to progress off into the Gulf, so expect scattered showers uh, through about the 9 o'clock hour. Then most of the action should be moving out into the Gulf of Mexico, and we'll start to see things uh, improving, clearing skies overnight. And temperatures still warm, though. We'll see lows in the mid-70s, but with a little bit of rainfall that fell today in the central portion of the state, It'll start off a little cooler than it has been these last couple of mornings with temperatures into the upper 70s to low 80s. Now, the future cast not indicating much rainfall on Tuesday. Uh, we'll start off with sunshine and it looks as though just limited chances for showers later in the day. That's due to some dry air that's slipping in from the east. It's actually set up just east of the state now and that will all be moving in our direction on Tuesday. It'll shut things down for the most part. It's hard to keep uh, showers down this time of year, but for the most part, uh, we're not expecting a lot of rainfall right through Wednesday and Thursday. But the Titan radar picture has been depicting showers moving from the northeast to the southwest, and they'll continue again uh, through this evening, as I mentioned, up until about 9 o'clock, and then showers and storms uh, scattered about. Some of them could bring some moderate to heavy rainfall at times. Not everyone's going to get the rainfall, though, as is typical during the summer months. Uh, still 80, though at 11 o'clock and we are anticipating uh, temperatures to warm up again into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees tomorrow. There will be some low 90s and that heat index will still stay high expected to be around 100 to 103 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Well, much more later. Alan. Are Suncoast voters tired of division in Washington? Is it time for a new face in Congress or is the so-called blue wave real or not? As Adam Cellini is here to explain, these questions will be answered this fall in the race for Florida's 16th Congressional District. Adam. Yeah, thank you, Alan. The same person has represented the Sun Coast in the U.S. House of Representatives for over a decade. But there are multiple reasons people think 2018 could be the year that changes. With the deadline to file passed, it appears two Democrats will try to derail Vern Buchanan's 12-year run as our Suncoast congressman. Typically during a midterm election, the party that's out of power has more energy, more enthusiasm to push back against the party uh, that's in power. And I think that's even more so the case when you have uh, Donald Trump as president. Sarasota litigator David Shapiro admits the divisive language and actions in Washington inspired him to run. I couldn't continue to watch what was happening in Washington without stepping into the fight. He so hopes to bring civility back to D.C. and disagrees with Buchanan um, yeah. and other Republicans who supported tax cuts that he believes will put Medicare and Social Security in jeopardy. I don't approve of his votes. I believe that uh, the dismantling of the Affordable Care Act left a lot of people uninsured. His primary opponent says Medicare and Social Security are her top priorities, too. Not only the wealthy deserve to be healthy. Medicare is absolutely critical to this district and people appreciate it. They appreciate what Medicare for All could do for their children and their grandchildren. Jan Schneider believes the country is as close to a viable national health care system as it's ever been. An attorney with an Ivy League PhD in political science, Schneider has testified in Congress, helped draft legislation, but despite five previous attempts, has not been able to win this seat in Congress. Still, she's ignoring naysayers who feel her time has passed. It's a primary. They can make up their own minds. Sarasota voters made up their minds earlier this year when they elected another Democratic attorney, Margaret Good, over another Buchanan, Vern's son James. Good's State House district was one that favored the president just a year earlier. That was sort of a bellwether race that was viewed as a referendum on Trump. It was a district that Trump carried by more than four uh, percentage points. Shapiro's candidacy is even drawing national attention. He was one of 13 candidates nationwide to get an endorsement from former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords Foundation Against Gun Violence. David is, um, you know, a superb candidate, got a lot of great experience, um, and he's able to draw a really important contrast. I think this is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. I know that's said all the time, but I think a lot of people believe it right now. But Buchanan says he's not scared of a blue wave. His son's state house defeat was only a fraction of the 16th congressional district. Trump won the overall district at 10, only won that portion at uh, 4. I won the last 
couple of races, 20 points plus. So I don't think it's a factor. Buchanan says he's got momentum too, with tax cuts and a new VA facility to be built in the district soon. As for health care, he disagrees with his opponents who say he hasn't done enough to secure Medicare and Social Security. Well, I think they're absolutely wrong on that. I'm on the committee that oversees Medicare and Social Security. Medicare right now is viable until 2024. 2034 for Social Security. And he says he's tried to reach across the aisle too on issues like citrus greening, opioids, and fighting President Trump's original offshore drilling proposal for Florida. I'd like to see Washington get out of that mode where we can clearly work together because at the end of the day, we're all Americans and we should be working for the people. David Shapiro and Jan Schneider will face each other in a primary on August 28th for a chance to challenge Vern Buchanan on that November 6th general election ballot. Adam, thank you. In the moment, what's the political landscape here on the Sun Coast as we head into the fall? Next on the Trapezoid. My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming. But I needed help, help with my insurance. And that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. If you think it's hot outside, just wait until you see even hotter savings inside. Only at Rugs as Art Hot Summer Savings Sale event will you find the lowest prices on a vast selection of stunning rugs, furniture accents, and accessories. This special event only happens once a year, so hurry in before the best selections are gone. The hot summer savings event ends soon, so don't miss out on the best prices ever. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system can make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> now SoClean.com has released the world's first and only automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer free for 30 days. Just call 800-604-0398. My health has improved. It's simple to use and I'm not worried about infections. SoClean works on all CPAP machines and popular masks, destroying CPAP bacteria, viruses, and germs without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and in just minutes, voila, sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited time offer. Call now, 800-604-0398 or visit SoClean.com today. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through TrueStage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. TrueStage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. And even if you're on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now, for a free, no obligation quote, TrueStage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through TrueStage. Call 1-800-842-7189 now. Welcome back. Vern Buchanan says he is not too worried about the so-called blue wave. But then why is he running so many ads months before the campaign season begins in earnest? It could be he is not leaving anything to chance. The Sun Coast may have gone for Donald Trump big time, but Margaret Good's victory over the congressman's son shows local Democrats are motivated. Now, we asked Congressman Buchanan to join us at the trapezoid to talk about the race. His campaign manager told us he wants to wait until the Democrats choose their candidate, and we'll talk to them in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about the landscape with Jacob Ogles, the political editor of SRQ Magazine. And, Jacob, my first question to you is the fact that Vern is running ads this early, and as one of our viewers just pointed out to us, he doesn't even say in them he's a Republican, tell you a lot about his concern this year, this cycle? It both 
relays the concern he has about the cycle, but also demonstrates the strength he has as an incumbent. So it's a balancing act. What do you mean by that? Well, it is interesting that, um, as you pointed out, he's not really running with the Republican brand on him in this type of political climate. That's telling for an incumbent. But he also is able to get on the air. He's got a war chest that really he's been building for years because he hasn't been worried about a, number, a November election for a long time. And he's got some personal wealth. So he's going to be able to go on the air and stay on the air and drill in the message of his own resume. All right. Well, our conversation on the, the congressional race in the 16th District continues right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harriman. Bob. Well, good evening, everyone. A beautiful day out on the beaches with the exception of the red tide, which is uh, sporadic across Suncoast beaches, and it looks like uh, it'll stay that way, too. It moves around occasionally. It's not all that widespread at this point, but uh, we'll have another midweek report coming out in just a couple of days. Casey Key webcam showing flat, calm seas out there as a result of relatively light winds. Now, we are looking at showers and storms progressing from the northeast today to the southwest, which is typical for our summer pattern. That's what we normally see is that east and northeast wind during the day butts up against the sea breeze, and then that sea breeze has a tendency to intensify the storms as they approach our coast. We're seeing some of that this evening, but not nearly as intense as what the rain we're seeing over parts of Mexico, Texas, stretching up toward Louisiana. This is that tropical disturbance we were watching last week. It never developed. It had a very small chance, and the Hurricane Center still gives it just a 10% chance of developing, but uh, it's just going to kind of sit here and spin, and not like Harvey, though, but still, it's still going to bring some pretty impressive rainfall amounts over the upcoming days into East Texas, uh, stretching all the way down to Mexico, where we could see some problems with flash flooding there and life-threatening mudslides, especially in Mexico. Uh, for us, as I mentioned, we have that northeasterly pattern for now, but there's a lot of dry air situated right here east of the state. That's all going to settle in on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, really drying things out here. And we'll have just a few isolated showers and storms and not uh, that much coverage anticipated. You can see that flow. It's been northeast to southwest. As I mentioned, a few scattered storms around. Those will continue to move off uh, toward the west right now. Siesta Key has had their fair share. We had a little bit of rainfall earlier uh, this evening. Moderate uh, right there near Lido, too. And it looks like uh, that scattered activity will continue uh, at least up until 9. And then uh, the future cast calling for generally fair skies overnight. And we'll start off with sunshine tomorrow on Tuesday. Temperatures into the uh, mid-70s to upper 70s, so a little bit cooler start tomorrow as opposed to this morning's very muggy and warm temperatures. We'll see those afternoon showers break out mainly to the north of us where there's a little bit more moisture uh, trapped, but we won't see many storms at all in the afternoon here. As I mentioned, that rain chance very small at 20%. Even Wednesday, it stays relatively dry here. And you'll notice we had a little switch up. We start to see that west wind return for Wednesday, and uh, that will bring a few isolated showers in, but that rain chance still very small. Temperatures currently into the upper 80s in Orlando now, 86 in Miami, Sarasota 90, although that temperature is starting to cool somewhat as a result of the rain cool air that's around. And as far as the Gulf water temperature goes, 87 degrees. Uh, it has cooled a little bit in Wachula down to 82 as a result, again, of that uh, moisture moving on in uh, as a result of those showers and storms. So for boaters, southeast winds turn to the west. Not much wind, five knots, and seas less than two feet. Smooth conditions out there on the bays and inland waters. The water temperature now 87 degrees. UV index will be high. Load up on that sunscreen if you're heading out in the boat or to the beaches or anywhere outdoors, really. Uh, here's the extended forecast then. So Tuesday, 20%, Wednesday, 20%, and then on Thursday, the first day of summer, by the way, uh, we have just a 20% chance for showers, and that is the longest day of the year. Officially, it rolls in. Just after 6 o'clock, again, that's when the northern hemisphere is facing right at the sun for the most part. The most direct rays there, the length of the day is the longest on that day. And again, that happens just at uh, 6, just after 6 a.m. on Thursday. Now, as far as our boating forecast goes, again, I mentioned it should stay nice, too. Uh, rain chance at 40% on Friday, Saturday, even goes up to Sunday, Monday at 50%. We'll be right back after this. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. 
please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. Planning a Carnival Fantasy Cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. Everything all right? Actually... You know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs. But we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to mysuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us. Help the hungry. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, what was once impossible is happening today for thousands of patients with blood cancer. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. She lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Welcome back. We are talking about the race for the 16th Congressional District. And joining us for more is Jacob Ogles, the political editor of SRQ Magazine. So talking for a moment about Vernon Buchanan, as he pointed out to us, he has won this district by 20 points last time around. On the other hand, he is running ads, incredibly, that says he is independent. Independent from what is the question. So my question to you is, given what we hear about a Democratic wave and the generic ballot shows the Democrats leading about seven points, do, do you think that Vern really has something to worry about? I think Vern has something to worry about. I wouldn't rank him as endangered quite yet. But I do think that this is a climate where he can't sit on his hands. He can't just save his money in his war chest and expect to coast to victory in November. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is targeting this congressional district, though. For and now. And they don't do that, you know, a lot. It's no, that's true. Um, now, we'll see how, how well their endurance is. There's probably six or seven congressional seats in the state of Florida that have the potential to be competitive. And I think the, the endurance of the DCCC is going to play a big role in just how competitive this because race is. Because they can win back Congress, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they could win a district, congressional district like this, at least now. Right. You know, there's three fairly easy pickups in South Florida for the Democrats. If they win those, it'll be the first time that half the Florida congressional delegation is Democrat in since the late 80s, since 1986. So when we're talking about the 16th, you have two Democrats running, uh, David Shapiro and Jan Schneider. Jan Sh Jan, uh, Janet uh, Shapiro, uh, Jan, Jan Schneider, <laughs> has won, run five times. Uh, you know, David Shapiro ran for the State House a couple of years ago. He is raising an impressive amount of money. He is getting the backing, as we're going to see later this week, of uh, people like Gabby Giffords. Yes. Um, what's your take? I think that, honestly, Jan Schneider was recognized as a standard bearer of democratic values for some time, uh, particularly back when this race was considered non-competitive and she was running against Katherine Harris when nobody would take her on. 
But right now, I think people want to see a polished candidate. I think Democratic establishment leaders in the area have greeted Jan Schneider with a range of polite dismissal to impolite dismissal. Because it, it has a practical impact right now. The uh, yeah. Sarasota Democratic Party cannot officially back um, David Shapiro right now because you know party rules are you can't do that until after a primary. Jan Schneider's position would be primaries are good for a party. Yes, and, and in a real sense that's true. Uh, you have the two Democratic candidates on tonight, and you're not the only media that's going to put special attention to the Democratic primary and wait to interview Vern Buchanan on another day. That's the good thing about primaries in terms of attention, in terms of enthusiasm. David Shapiro will walk into the November election, presuming he's the nominee, um, having already had people vote for him a few months ago. Vern Buchanan is going to be relying on people voting for him two years ago. What, how would you characterize the state of the Democratic race at this point? The Democratic race is playing out, but I, I think that there's a clear favorite. Um, and in a lot of ways, it's running the clock out and making sure that it doesn't break into a civil war, much the way that the Hillary Clinton Bernie Sanders race ended up dividing the party in ways that hurt voter turnout in November. Right. I will have to leave it there. Jacob, thank you very much. We are just getting warmed up. Our conversation on the race for the 16th Congressional District will continue after a quick break. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through TrueStage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call and you cannot be turned down for any reason. Even if you have health problems or are living on a fixed income, guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance policies could work for you with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as 940 a month. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. My mom didn't have life insurance and the cost all fell on me. And that's expensive. We're, we're still paying for yeah, that. Yeah, we're still paying for that. Call 1-800-218-4991. Now, in one phone call, you can help prepare your family with protection amounts up to $25,000. There are no medical tests or health questions. And remember, you cannot be turned down for any reason. In fact, True Stage policies are already protecting over 18 million Americans. And rates are designed to be affordable, starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as 940 a month. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. When I leave, everything will be taken care of for them. Call 1-800-218-4991 now for a free, no obligation quote. True Stage offers plans to fit your budget with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1 800 218 4991 now. On average, an American household with at least one credit card struggles with over $15,000 in credit card debt. But right now, if you qualify for National Debt Relief's Debt Reset Program, your debt balances and monthly payments will be reduced while you become debt-free in 24 to 48 months. Enroll now and there won't be any upfront costs or out-of-pocket expenses. To qualify for the Debt Reset Program, you must have at least $10,000 or more in credit card debt, unsecured loan debt, collection debt, and or medical bills. You must also be past due or struggling to make minimum monthly payments 
or considering filing for bankruptcy. If this sounds like you, avoid the serious consequences of bankruptcy and take advantage of National Debt Relief's Debt Reset Program today and become debt-free in 24 to 48 months. Call now to see if you qualify. A debt relief counselor is available to assist you 24 hours a day. Call 800-731-6432. That's 800-731-6432. You're watching ABC 7 News at 7.30. Welcome back. Democrats have repeatedly targeted Vern Buchanan over the last decade. They have come close a couple of times, but with the talk of a blue wave, is this the year? And joining us for more are the first of two Democrats vying for the Democratic nomination, Sarasota attorney David Shapiro. David, welcome to the Trapezoid. Oh, I'm enjoying it. Thanks for having me, Alan. Uh, it's our pleasure. What is the case to fire Vern Buchanan? If you saw his ads, he says he is independent, he loves the environment, he is battling the opioid crisis, He's, yeah. he has influence in Congress, he's on ways and means. Well, first of all, I, the independence is a little of a bit of a stretch. He's pretty much voted 98.8% .8 of the time with the Republicans. As for firing him, I have been representing people in this community for nearly 30 years. Uh, helping working class families, battling corporations and insurance companies. So I completely understand over the years uh, their concern for affordable health care or lower cost of uh, health insurance. I understand their concerns and fears that they may lose Medicare and Social Security uh, over the years. I also understand that the veterans aren't getting what they deserve and what they need. Um, and that seniors are concerned about the rising cost of prescription medication. None of these things have been addressed. In fact, just the opposite. In terms of the Affordable Care Act, uh, Congressman Buchanan voted at least 16 times to repeal it with nothing to replace it. That would effectively put my clients and thousands of people in Florida 16 in our community without any health insurance at all. Is the problem, though, the dynamic of taking on a, an incumbent who has such a vast uh, campaign reserve and as much personal wealth as Mr. Buchanan have, that he is on the air baking in this message of independence and care about the environment while you're busy doing what candidates usually do, and, and that is trying to raise money to, to mount this campaign and get your message across later in the game. Well, that's exactly right. Uh, we need to have enough resources to get our message across. In terms of all the money uh, that he has or what he's doing right now, really is going to be inconsequential down the road. And I'll tell you why. What I have learned that people have, calling, uh, have been calling the blue wave, it's more of an enlightenment. People are very, very engaged. And by that, I mean they're doing the research. They realize now, maybe than ever before, the importance of our elected officials on their lives. So these TV ads, uh, the mail pieces, it's informative, but it's not going to be enough. People are going to check the record. They're going to find out how Congressman Buchanan actually voted. They're going to look at my record in terms of what I've accomplished here in this community. Hopefully they will. I'm counting on the fact that they'll talk to people I've worked with, worked against, the judges that I've been in front of, uh, the nonprofits that I've uh, been on the board. Uh, these are the things that I think people are doing. They're calling it a blue wave, but it's more or less... Uh, an engagement or enlightenment. You don't think it's problematic that he is able to bake in that <clears throat> message while you hit the phones and, and raise the money? I think there'll be an opportunity for me to address some of those things or uh, that Congressman Buchanan is, is stating. Like right now, for example, when he talks about being independent, I'm here and I will tell you that his voting record was about 98.8% .8 with the Republican Party. So that wouldn't really be considered an independent. Uh, in terms of the opioid crisis, let's find out how much funding uh, Congressman Buchanan uh, was allocating or advocating for the treatment of opioid addiction. These are the things that we're going to have to bring out, and he'll have to defend his record. Talk about the landscape of this particular race. Obviously, many Democrats, after Margaret Good beat James Buchanan a couple months ago, really saw the possible out there. But that is one district in the middle of, of uh, this area that the, the president won by four or five points. When you're talking about Manatee County and Southern Hillsborough County, we're talking about a, a real red area. So what gives you the confidence, given how Vern has done over the past several cycles, that you can do this? You know, I've been out there talking to people a great deal, and I've been, you know, engaged with uh, Republicans, nonparty affiliates. Keep in mind, 
that about 27% of the people in Florida 16, which includes Sarasota, all of Manatee, and some of Hillsboro, 27% are non-party affiliate. That's number one. There's only been one race in this Florida 16. That was in 16. So it's really a new district, and I think you're seeing that reflected in Mr. Buchanan's ads. Uh, so when I'm talking to people, they're saying, look, there's problems in Washington. They're not working together. What they're really looking for me is not so much my label as a Democrat, but will you work together with other people across the aisle, with the people in your party to get things done? Uh, they're tired of this fighting. That, that's the impression I've been getting. You, but you also have people on both sides who say, you know what, we, we don't want our people to work with the other side. We, Democrats look at what's happening in Congress and what the president is doing. They're pulling their hair out, and they just want somebody to reverse everything that Trump and Congress has done. And I, I would imagine the Republicans feel the same way, that they are finally getting done everything that th they have talked about for years. You know, I think there is a percentage of those people. We call them the base of the parties, but there are a lot of people who've had enough uh, in terms of uh, that kind of divisiveness. And that's what we're gambling on. And frankly, I think that's what uh, Congressman Buchanan is reflecting again with his, uh, his, his mailers and such. So I, it's always sort of the darkest before the dawn. I think people are ready to start moving forward, working together. You know, we, we tried it this way. It's not really working out. Uh, there are a lot of people in Congress that are trying to work together already to accomplish certain things like the Affordable Care Act. We have to leave it there. David, thank you very much. Good luck on the campaign trail. Thank you. Uh, I hope to see you again soon. All right, thanks a lot. We have to take a quick break, and then when we return, the other candidate, Jan Schneider, in a moment. Stay with us. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. And even if you're on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now, for a free, no obligation quote, True Stage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1 800 842 7189 now. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system can make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> now SoClean.com has released the world's first and only automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer free for 30 days. Just call 800-604-0398. My health has improved. It's simple to use and I'm not worried about infections. SoClean works on all CPAP machines and popular masks, destroying CPAP bacteria, viruses, and germs without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and in just minutes, voila, sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited time offer. Call now, 800-604-0398. 
or visit SoClean.com today. There are two Democrats vying for their party's nomination, and joining us now is Jan Schneider. Jan, welcome back to the Trapezoid. So take a moment and tell us why you think Vern Buchanan should be fired. Vern Buchanan is for wealth. I think that's the major divide in this election cycle. Republicans are for wealth, Democrats are for health. He voted for the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, 1.5 trillion for wealthy corporations and the ultra-rich, of which he is one. He voted to privatize, or to actually to turn Medicare into a so-called premium support voucher system. He's not very strong on Social Security. Everything he does benefits the wealthy. But he has been in office over a decade now. He won last time against you in 2016 by 20 points, I, I believe. Some people will say, you know, you, you, I believe you've run five times. Why run again? This, I know, is a red area. But finally, the voters are coming around. I ran on single payer Medicare for all against Katherine Harris in 2002. Now, it's supported by 58% of the country. I think the voters deserve better than they're getting. Margaret Good uh, stunned the area when she won the special election a couple of months ago against James Buchanan, and we asked uh, David Shapiro the same question. That has added a lot of momentum to the Democrats, but this is a big congressional district, and you're dealing with uh, Manatee County, which is a, a where Republicans far out-register Democrats and Southern Hillsborough County, despite what we hear about the Democratic wave and that the, the generic ballot has the Democrats up by seven right now, what gives you a confidence that there could be that much of a turnaround? We have to make the wave and we have to build for the future. Now, the motto of our campaign this time is not only the wealthy deserve to be healthy, this is the second oldest congressional district in the country. We want, as I said, single payer Medicare for all. Don't privatize Medicare. Don't turn Medicaid into a block grant system. And I feel really strongly having military in my family. Don't privatize the VA health care system. In all of these respects, Vern Buchanan is not, I think, serving his constituents. There are things we agree on, obviously. Now, as far as turning it around, last time we ran a very brief, abbreviated campaign to try and defeat the racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic liar is what I think of the current incumbent in the White House. Vern spent close to a million dollars. We spent about 30,000. We did better than the other Democrats in this district. But let me ask you this, uh, and, and I, I take all of that, but as you, you talk about that, the name of the game, maybe too often in our political um, uh, system, is, is money. And your primary opponent, David Shapiro, is out there doing what a lot of Democrats do in, in raising uh, an impressive amount of money. Um, do you have the same kind of system to raise, raise we money? We have started that. Unfortunately, I had a bad car accident. I know that. About a month ago, which was when I was starting. But we have name recognition. One thing, last time, that was for Hillary Clinton. Well, not for Hillary. If they wouldn't vote for Hillary, we tried to get people to vote against Trump. But it did get me a lot of name recognition in this district, but when, poll recognition. But when we're talking about the primary, Mr. Shapiro will have the money to, to advertise around then. You know, it's unclear whether you will. And, and when people go to the polls, uh, that you know, they're, they're, they're seeing things, they're getting things in the mail, that's the name of the game. Well, they will get things in the mail. We have about $100,000. We've been on social media constantly. We're up to about 60, 80,000 reach each and every week. We've been making use of volunteers. I do at least two events a day, and our campaign does at least three. 
so we will be out there. Of course money is important, and of course the corporate party is in favor of money, but I am convinced we're Democrats. We have to offer the people something to vote for, not just against, and no one's going to buy an election against Fern Buchanan. Jan, thank you very much for being here. Good luck on the trail. Thank you. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about Friday's show. On the week in Washington, last week, President Trump traveled to Singapore to meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Kim has agreed to cease all nuclear threats towards the United States. A step in the right direction? Or is he playing the U.S.? We went to Facebook for your thoughts. And Steve says, it is a milestone bringing the North Korean dictator to the table. Obviously, Kim is there because unlike Obama, Trump has a set and stood up to the bully. Paul says, I'd rather see him open up communication with Flint and Puerto Rico. Teresa says, making friends is better than having en enemies. If North Korea doesn't comply, we still have military actions. And Joni says, I'm more concerned that Trump wants us to sit up in attention to him like they do for Kim. He's forgotten that he works for us, or maybe there's a reason why he's so chummy with despots. And Kevin says North Korea's pledges are as valuable as a diploma from Trump University. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. Thanks to Jan Schneider and David Shapiro and Jacob Ogles. When we return, President Trump blaming Democrats for his strict laws on the borders. But right now, let's get a final check on our first alert forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. What a beautiful day out on the beaches, with the exception of the red tide, which is uh, sporadic across Suncoast beaches, and it looks like uh, it'll stay that way, too. It moves around occasionally. It's not all that widespread at this point, but uh, we'll have another midweek report coming out in just a couple of days. Casey Key webcam showing flat, calm seas out there as a result of relatively light winds. Now, we are looking at showers and storms progressing from the northeast today to the southwest, which is typical for our summer pattern. That's what we normally see is that east and northeast wind during the day butts up against the sea breeze, and then that sea breeze has a tendency to intensify the storms as they approach our coast. We're seeing some of that this evening, but not nearly as intense as what the rain we're seeing over parts of Mexico, Texas, stretching up toward Louisiana. This is that tropical disturbance we were watching last week. It never developed. It had a very small chance, and the Hurricane Center still gives it just a 10% chance of developing, but uh, it's just going to kind of sit here and spin, and not like Harvey, though, but still, it's still going to bring some pretty impressive rainfall amounts over the upcoming days into East Texas, uh, stretching all the way down to Mexico, where we could see some problems with flash flooding there and life-threatening mudslides, especially in Mexico. Uh, for us, as I mentioned, we have that northeasterly pattern for now, but there's a lot of dry air situated right here east of the state that's all going to settle in on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, really drying things out here. And we'll have just a few isolated showers and storms and not uh, that much coverage anticipated. Uh, you can see that flow. It's been northeast to southwest. As I mentioned, a few scattered storms around. Those will continue to move off uh, toward the west right now. Siesta Key has had their fair share. We had a little bit of rainfall earlier uh, this evening. Moderate uh, right there near Lido, too. And it looks like uh, that scattered activity will continue uh, at least up until 9. And then uh, the future cast calling for generally fair skies overnight and we'll start off with sunshine tomorrow on Tuesday temperatures into the uh, mid 70s to upper 70s so a little bit cooler start tomorrow as opposed to this morning's very muggy and warm temperatures we'll see those afternoon showers break out mainly to the north of us where there's a little bit more moisture uh, trapped but we won't see many storms at all in the afternoon here as I mentioned that rain chance very small at 20 percent even Wednesday it stays relatively dry here and you notice we had a little switch up. We start to see that west wind return for Wednesday and uh, that will bring a few isolated showers in, but that rain chance still very small. Temperatures currently into the upper 80s in Orlando now, 86 in Miami, Sarasota 90, although that temperature is starting to cool somewhat as a result of the rain cooled air that's around. And as far as the Gulf water temperature goes, 87 degrees. Uh, it has cooled a little bit in Wachula down to 82 as a result again of that uh, moisture moving on in. Uh, as a result of those showers and storms. So for boaters, southeast winds turn to the west. Not much wind, five knots, and seas less than two feet. Smooth conditions out there on the bays and inland waters. The water temperature now 87 degrees. UV index will be high. Load up on that sunscreen if you're heading out in the boat or to the beaches or anywhere outdoors, really. Uh, here's the extended forecast then. So Tuesday, 20%. 
Wednesday, 20%. And then on Thursday, the first day of summer, by the way, uh, we have just a 20% chance for showers, and that is the longest day of the year. Officially, it rolls in just after 6 o'clock. Again, that's when the northern hemisphere is facing right at the sun for the most part, the most direct rays there. The length of the day is longest on that day, and again, that happens just, at, uh, six, just after 6 a.m., on Thursday. Now, as far as our boating forecast goes, again, I mentioned it should stay nice too. Uh, rain chance at 40% on Friday, Saturday, even goes up to Sunday, Monday at 50%. We'll be right back after this. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama Black Belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the Black Belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. protection she has. Buddy up. I'm Jill Harrington. Please visit HelpSaveTheNextGirl.com and get involved. Checking primetime headlines, President Trump continues to blame Democrats for his decision to separate an estimated 2,000 families and their kids. ABC's Jade Norman is in Washington with the latest. It's the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy that's resulted in some 2,000 kids being taken away from their families who were seeking asylum. We have the worst immigration laws in the entire world. Nobody has such sad, such bad, and actually, in many cases, such horrible and tough. You see about child separation. You see what's going on there. President Trump is blaming Democrats, though the zero tolerance policy isn't a law and is being carried out by his administration, arresting undocumented immigrants and separating them from their children. Why wouldn't you bring children with you if you know you would be released and not prosecuted? Images from Homeland Security show men, women, and children behind chain link cages, some on bare floors. Nancy Pelosi went to the border to see for herself. 
This is so heartbreaking. It so uh, challenges the conscience of our country uh, that it must be changed, must be changed immediately. The battle over undocumented immigrants crossing the border into the U.S. rages on. New numbers from Health and Human Services show just under 12,000 kids in their custody, most of whom were unaccompanied minors. President Trump tweeting, big mistake made all over Europe in allowing millions of people in who have so strongly and violently changed their culture. The United States will not be a migrant camp and it will not be a refugee holding facility. House Speaker Paul Ryan said the House will take up two immigration bills as early as this week. At this point, it's still unclear exactly what they'll say, but sources tell ABC News both will address the issue of families being separated. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. During a White House meeting today with members of the National Space Council, President Trump announced he will move to make a new branch of the military focus solely on space. I'm here by directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force, separate but equal. Trump previously floated the idea of adding a Space Force branch to the U.S. military in March. The concept has received some support on Capitol Hill, but drawn skepticism from the Pentagon. A new mental health condition being announced by the World Health Organization, gaming disorder. The disorder is listed in the 11th edition of its International Classification of Diseases. The ICD is used by doctors and other medical practitioners to diagnose disease and other conditions. In many cases, healthcare companies and insurers use the ICD as a basis for insurance reimbursement. Characteristics of gaming disorder include the loss of control and escalation of gaming behavior despite negative consequences. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.